Harmonic chattering is a problem we deal with, especially on a large disc like this. Today, I want to show you some ways to eliminate that problem. Welcome back to Mental Tips and Tricks. My name's Dale. Now, I got really beat up last time for not wearing eye protection, and I want you guys to know that I almost wear this 90% of the time in the shop. The only time I don't wear it is actually when I'm doing videos. And like I've said before, the most dangerous thing I can do in this entire shop is actually do videos and set up cameras and have to dance around them. And I gotta say, it's a real headache. So when you see me not wearing this, it's not because I don't want to, it's that it's very inconvenient wearing this and actually talk to you guys because I always have to talk through it. And I hate having to lift it up, take it down, lift it up, take it down during a video. So let's get back to this. Harmonic chattering is something we have to deal with, especially on a disc of this size. I've had it on even smaller discs, and we have to deal with it differently matter on the size of the disc because the harmonics can change quite a bit. Now a lot of you wrote in and talked about you know wrapping a leather belt around it, um, doing different things in that fashion, talked about putting rubber mats on the back of this, trying whatever you can to absorb it. Another one I liked was using electrician's tape and wrapping around the edge to help absorb the vibration. Well remember Everything has its place, and some work better than others. And it also matters on what size of disc you're turning. So you have to think about this. If you've got a little small bell and you ring it, you can grab it with your hands and stop the ringing. You get a big bell and try to ring it and grab it with your hands, well, you'll find out it's going to chatter your teeth before you stop it ringing. That's the same situation here where electrician's tape, even a uh, skateboard wheel, which is actually one of my favorites to do, is to go in with a skateboard wheel against the back side, see, see if you can't absorb the vibration, a wood block. I tried everything on this to stop that harmonics from happening. Well, different techniques work better at different diameters. In this case, all those techniques didn't work. They weren't enough. So what I ended up doing was cutting out a piece of millimeter three quarter inch particle board, cutting it down on the bandsaw, and then using double stick tape to stick it down. Now, if you'll notice, when I lay the double stick tape down, I laid it in random patterns. And the reason you do that is you don't want any harmonics to develop because of your taping pattern. Let's see how well we did going through all these steps. The finish is a lot better now. As you can hear, it's really heavy on one side and no cutting on the other. That's why we're doing the back side and we're going to hope that it's going to balance the wheel enough. Now, right now I've got a cutter on here, 16th of an inch radius, and I'm trying again different cutters. I was able to kind of use a sharp point before to cut through. Now I'm going with something that has a lot more surface and what I'm hoping is with a lot more surface cutting and that radius that it helps throw off the harmonics. Because another thing that will happen in harmonics is you develop a washboard pattern. And not only is it a washboard pattern, but it's off frequency because of the radius. So every time you cut into it, it can cause more vibration. So you got to watch out for that. One of the things I did with my other cutter was imagine if this is the surface and these are the harmonic vibrations or the um, chatter marks in the disc. What I did is I went in with a very slight angle to the tip. So I would cut it a little into this one, a little more into this one, and a little more into this one. So what I was hoping by hitting three harmonic surfaces at the same time, they would cancel each other out. 
Another way of looking at that is sometimes you'll see a machine like a Rockwell Unisaw and the motor to the arbor, there's actually three belts on that. And a lot of people think that's to add more friction. Well, actually, three belts cancel out the vibration to each other. If one starts to vibrate, the other ones cancel it out. Or if two start to vibrate, the third one cancels it out. Well, that's what I was trying to do there. And it worked out fairly well, best I could expect. Now I'm trying something a little different here because I don't have that ringing. This disc bows out a little bit. So I'm going to probably stair step as I cut just to save material and also to save time because I don't need this flat across the back. I just need to have it good enough. <coughs> I'm going to try an insert again, and this has a really a sharp edge on it. This is what I was using before. Um, I think it was just causing me way too much surface. It just caused me more vibration. So I'm going to go in with a slight radius on this. I like this because I'm actually able to hold it better in the holder. I think we're finding the magic formula. A sharper edge or a, a smaller radius seems to be cutting this really well. The other problem is because the disc isn't the same thickness is it's coming around and only cutting on part of it. But we're starting to get through that pretty quick. And like I said, I'm going to probably stair step this so I'm not taking off too much. I want to keep as much mass on this disc as I can. So let's keep cutting. Oh, one more thing is, right now I'm feeding it by hand because if it starts to chatter, I can back it off a little bit. I'm hoping to go over to the auto feed here in a little bit and just see if I can't tweak it in. I'll say to get the rest of the surface down at the rate that I'm going, I've got probably a good two hours of just resurfing the, resurfacing this. And I'm not going to punish you guys with the whole thing. I'll fast forward through it. There we are, all finished up. I think it's amazing the new finish that I got went a lot faster than I also expected. I'm not exactly in love with the stair steps, but it saved material and saved me a lot of time. At the very end, I actually changed cutters. I went back to that original one to do the last bit. I also brought the RPMs up from 90 up to 430 RPMs. And that also cleaned it up quite a bit. It was interesting is at that speed, this being out of balance, the machine was moving a little bit, but it didn't affect the finish. And the final quality of it, I think, is really well. And I don't have to hold any particular accuracies. Now I'm going to break this all apart. And we're going to... It's time to put the gap back in. Now, a lot of people have had concerns that this doesn't go in very well. I don't know. I've never done it before. But one thing I do know is this has never been taken out before. And the real key here, in my opinion, is cleanliness. You're going to want to come in here and make sure this 
is as clean as it can physically get. Because if there's one little particle off, it's going to raise it up a thousandth of an inch, and you're going to see it. Now, this has been scraped at the factory. Um, if you want to call that scraping. Uh, scraping, they talk about points and scraping, where 20 points is a really good bearing surface. Uh, 40 points is an excellent bearing surface and very rarely done because it takes so much time. Well, this one here looks more like three, maybe four points per square inch. So it's not that good. And what I did to clean this, I went in with paint thinner. I have a spray bottle of it, sprayed it down, went in some different brushes like this. Also, I had a little paint scraper to just kind of work everything. Because remember, this originally was painted in place, actually bondoed into place, and then painted. So there was a little area here that you could see where the bondo was sticking up. And we want to get rid of that. What you want to be cognizant of is any sort of burrs. So this is when you want to come in with a stone and just kind of check for any high spots and any edges that may be raised up. This one here you'll have some concerns because if you put this down, you'll see I'm just kind of sensing it. I'll feel if it grabs this will rotate or stop or hang up in some way. And since this has been taken off and put, in, put someplace else, well, it could have gotten a ding someplace. And just like if you're working on the surface grinder, we're going to feel for any dirt. Actually, I should be feeling for dirt on this one first, because anything may fall down there. Now, if I had a parts washer, I'd actually take this and run it through there, because I know I'm going to have grit coming out of here in the different holes, but we're going to take a risk. I figure no matter what I do, it's going to be better than what, it did, what they did at the factory. Let me check the surface. This is a contact surface here on this side. So now I have to go through, check it again. Going to put the screws in now. Tightening these screws down, in my opinion, is just like tightening down a head on an engine. You don't want to torque one down and then go torque the rest. You want to work it in place. I didn't put any sort of oil in there to help it from, uh, what do I want to say, and any anti-seize materials, because I don't know how well, how flat this is going to sit. And based on when I took it off, how much oil was in there, I think a lot will work its way in. It'll work through these bolts here. It'll also just, when it comes into this edge here, it'll just suck in through capillary action. So it needs to be lowered. Actually, it needs to, well, let's just lower it down on this corner and see what happens, see if that doesn't. Oh, that's pretty good. Let's try this one. Oh, excellent. Check again. That one's perfect. This one's hanging up just a hair. Nice. So take your time during this process. Still excellent. Oh, that's really good. 
I'm going to go for a final tighten. Oh, that's perfect. Okay, let's bring the hit, let's bring the carriage over. Great. I think we have a very successful install of the gap. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also, give me your positive, supportive comments and your criticism in a positive way. All right, until next time, go out in your shop and build something cool. Thanks.